to our six meters training video. My name is Rick Frost and my call is Kilo 4 Romeo Echo Foxtrot. In this series of videos we're going to look at digital communications on ham radio and more specifically how to use the WinLink email system. In today's video we're going to look at the hardware connections that you're going to need to make to make that happen. We're going to be looking at a VHF packet unit. We'll be looking at an HF Pactor unit. We'll also be looking at a sound card interface and all of these items will be connecting to the Kenwood TS2000 radio which is in use and has been deployed to all of our hospital locations. So let's get started. Before we look at the individual boxes I'd like to try to give you a big picture view of the cabling involved. Let's start out by looking at the Kenwood TS2000 rear panel. On the rear panel there are two connectors that we're interested in looking at. The first one is the ACC2 connector. This is the 13 pin connector on the back of the radio that allows audio to go in and out and also push to talk. The other connector we're looking at is the serial connector. This is the 9 pin sub D connector listed as COM. The three boxes that you see at the bottom of our diagram here are three different units that we're going to look at. We have an HF Pactor TNC. This is the SES unit. We have a VHF Packet TNC. This is the KPC 3 Plus unit. And then we have the Signal Link sound card unit. Let's start with the HF Pactor. There are four connections for it. We have a power connection that's coming in from the power supply. We, this blue line here represents our serial connection. The serial connection is going to the COM port. The green line here is representing our 13 pin audio connection. And finally this last blue line represents the 9 pin serial cable that's running to our computer. In this case you'll see this little yellow display here representing the USB serial adapter that you might be using which turns the 9 pin serial into a USB connection. Our second box we'll look at is the VHF packet unit. It has three connections the power supply, the green line that represents our 13 pin ACC2 cable, and our computer cable represented by this blue line again it runs as a 9 pin sub D connection into a USB serial adapter and turns it into a USB connection. Our last box the signal link there are only two connections on it. The green line again represents our 13 pin ACC2 connection and the other one is a USB connector. You'll notice that I have all of these USBs running into a USB hub. That's one possible way to connect them all up at the same time. It's a little complicated. Your location probably won't have that, but it is a possibility for trying to have less connections having to be made every time. Okay, so now you've got a look at the big picture here. Let's look at the individual boxes. The first unit we're going to look at today is the Cantronics KPC 3 Plus TNC. Let's take a look at the back of it. Looking at the back of the Cantronics KPC 3 Plus, you'll notice there are three connections. The first one is the connection that goes to your radio. At the box, it's a 9 pin sub D. The other end of that cable is a 13 pin cable that goes into the ACC2 port on the back of the TS2000. This basically transfers the audio in and out in your push to talk. This is the same cable that we'll be using on all of the interfaces as far as the connector is concerned. The next one at the box is a 25 pin cable connector. But what comes on the other end of that is your standard 9 pin sub D serial connection. This is what connects to the back of your computer if you have a COM port and that connector. If not, then you'll use a USB interface to accomplish that. We'll talk about that later. The last connection is a power connection. And you notice that we have Anderson power pole connectors worked up for that. So these are the three cables that you'll connect to make 
the KPC 3 Plus operate. The next unit we're going to look at is the SCS PTC 2 Pro. This is the Pactor unit, and let's look at the connections on the back of it. We're looking at the back of the PTC 2 Pro. The connections are very similar, but there is one additional one. Let's work our way across starting on the left-hand side. The first thing is a power switch, on-off switch, and obviously that'll need to be on after you make all your connections. The next item is a DCN power cord, and again we have the Anderson power pole connectors on it. These two connectors here are for packet radio. If you had a separate packet radio, you could actually have two radios hooked up to this unit, one doing Pactor and one doing packet. In our configuration in the hospital, we're not using either one of these ports. The next one is HF audio, and it's this cable right here, and it comes out to our standard 13-pin cable that I showed you earlier. Again, this is transferring the audio in and out to the radio and the push-to-talk. Again, this is the cable that will connect to the TS-2000. The next cable is the unique cable on this unit. This unit has a serial cable, a 9-pin sub-D cable, and this also connects to the back of the radio. This will let the unit control the radio and change the frequencies automatically, which is extremely convenient. So again, this cable will connect to the back of the TS-2000's serial port. The last cable is our computer cable. It's the RS-232 cable, and it's the standard one that we've seen uh, throughout, the 9-pin sub-D, and again, that will connect to the computer directly if you have a COM port, and if you don't, you can use a USB interface to connect that to the computer. The last interface we're going to look at today is the SignalLink USB sound card. Let's take a look at the back. The SignalLink actually is the simplest to connect of all three boxes, and the main reason is that the power for the unit comes from the USB connector, so there's no power cord. There's only two cables. One goes to the radio and one goes to the computer. And of course the radio is our standard 13 pin cable that we're used to seeing and what goes to the computer is just standard USB connection. So that's all it takes. We're looking at the back of the Kenwood TS2000 radio and there are really only two ports that we're interested in looking at. The first one is the ACC2 data port. This is the 13 pin connector on the back of the radio that we're going to feed audio and push to talk through. The second thing we're interested in is the COM port. This is the 9 pin sub D connector that we use to feed direct serial command to the radio. The first thing we want to look at is connecting our 13 pin cable. You'll notice that on my black cables I put some yellow tape on and also put an arrow on so that I can see which part of the connector goes up. I've also got a line on the radio here. All I've got to do is line up those two lines and push the cable in, and I know I'm not going to bend the pins up. I suggest you do this on all your 13 pin cables. The next thing we're going to hook up is the serial port cable. This is a 9 pin sub D cable, and you notice that the connector on it is narrower on one side, just like it is on the radio. The narrow part of the connector goes up. An easy way to remember it. And that's all it takes to hook up our unit. We're looking at an older model desktop computer. The main thing that's important to recognize this is that it does have a COM port. This is the 9-pin sub-D connection on the back of the older model computers that gives you direct serial connection to your packet and Pactor units. Um, the cable that connects to that is the one that's off of the units. It's a sub-D connector. It can only go on in one direction, and all it takes to install it is just to push it on and tighten up the screws good and tight. Now, on some computers, you won't have a COM port. All you'll have is a USB port. If you do have a USB port, you can get a USB adapter. It's basically going to take your USB connection off the computer and give you that 9-pin serial port output. So it's just a matter of hooking that unit up to the existing cable you're going to use it with, 
and then connect it to the USB port on the computer. Easy enough. The important thing to remember about these adapters are there are two basic types, the prolific and the FTDI. The prolific you'll find on older model computers, they work with Windows XP and older. The FTDI based adapter, and that's the chip that's inside of it, works better with the Windows 7 and Windows 8 computers. In fact, it's the only chip that will work on that. Typically, the prolific won't. So if you have to have a choice between getting the adapter, get the one with the FTDI chip in it. And that'll be one of the features that you'll uh, see when you go to purchase it. I'll show you an example of one in just a moment. So again, if you need the USB adapter, use it. If you do have a COM port, the preferred method is to actually use the COM port. It's a little bit more reliable than the USB adapter. So as promised, here's an example of the USB adapter that you'd like to have. The main thing to look for here is it has the FTDI chip in it. This chip is what makes it compatible with Windows 7 and Windows 8 and most of the computers. This particular one has uh, an LED display in it, which is kind of neat. It does give you some testing capability built into it. Uh, but this is the type of adapter that you want to get. Again, it's a USB to 9-pin sub-D adapter, and it's what we're going to use for serial control. I want to go back to our wiring diagram one last time and look at one optional cable that would be handy to have in your system. If you look at our wiring diagram here, there is a serial cable that runs from the COM port on the radio over to a serial adapter, becomes a USB, and goes into the computer. This serial cable will give us direct control over the radio when using programs like Ham Radio Deluxe. Another program that uses that is RMS Express when we run Winmore within it. Winmore will use this serial cable to control the radio and change the frequencies on the radio to whichever one we click on. So even though we're using the signal link box and it just has two cables that connect, we also want to have this serial cable in place when we're running Winmore. So that's one optional cable that you want to make sure that your system has.